Deep in the mind's recesses, in the very abyss of consciousness and conceptualization, are hidden both profound questions and horrifying illuminations on the nature of reality. Is experience immutable? Are truth and logic, the bedrock of understanding, objective? Is the past written indelibly into memory that guides the present and informs the future? Or are such things hollow illusion? Can minds and reminiscence be twisted, manipulated, to alter the very nature of reality itself? What truly is existence? Such questions are pursued by one of the most expansive, assiduous minds in the multiverse, by one whose skill in illusion, projection, and mind magic gives him great perspectives in pursuit of truth. In his journey across the blind eternities, he's made and remade himself, edited his identity. His is a story of profound insight, of acquisition of knowledge to attain enlightenment, of creating order from a chaotic multiverse to understand its interconnectedness and his role within. This is the story of Jace Bellerin. Jace Bellerin is a human planeswalker from the conflict-riven plain of Rin, whose actions have decisively shaped the multiversal landscape in recent years. His impressive feats include arbitrating as living guild pact on Ravnica, founding the planeswalking league known as the Gatewatch, thwarting the infinitely powerful Eldrazi Titans, discovering the lost city of Araska, and many others. But Bellerin is much more than a collection of deeds done. His character is one of great depth as he traverses the external and internal pitfalls of consciousness, will, and memory, all of which mold him into a richly complex individual. Jace is a man of mysteries. He's calm, self-composed, and often retreats inward to isolated thought. Bellerin's preference for obscurity is typified in his notable appearance, a sullen figure, cloaked and hooded, that melts seamlessly into crowds and fades from memory. Both his skin and his garb are ornamented in Ravnican Gruul clan tattoos that glow softly when Jace engages in magic, which we see in cards like Dramatic Reversal and Jace, Arcane Strategist. His temperament is one of a silent observer. Bellerin's staggering genius is the foundation upon which many skills are mastered. He's a voracious learner, hungry for knowledge and primarily self-taught. He's calculating and ponderous, often analyzing from multiple perspectives to develop contingencies several layers deep. He outwits opponents before battle initiates and constantly plums the arcane in search of greater wisdom. This industriousness is heard in the flavor text of contingency plans. Improvisation is for those who fail to prepare. Jace's propensity for careful consideration deeply entrenches him within blue mana and he embodies many of its core philosophies. In fact, every printing of Bellerin save for the Infinity is mono blue. This translates to supreme mastery of her blue to the exclusion of all else, which grants unique abilities compared to others. Jace commands counter magic and disruption, nullifying attacks as they are cast, which is on display in Essence Scatter and Counterspell. He possesses telepathy and mind magic, which allows him to alter perception. In Bellerin's hands, reality is a malleable toy shaped by his whims. He can cast projections, conjure illusions so rich they are confused with the tangible, as seen in Jace's phantasm an illusionary servant, the flavor text of which reads, Illusion is a handy but fragile medium. Use it only in a pinch or against the dim-witted. He can pierce minds, infiltrate thoughts to edit memories, read impulses, or destroy them entirely. He uses such magic freely, often altering his own memories to suit his needs. Preparedness is his preserve, and Jace prides himself in knowing events' consequences before they transpire. True to blue philosophy, Bellerin values intellect, hindsight, and foresight above all else. Rarely is he confronted with surprise of a novel situation, and rarer still is he on the back foot. Widely considered one of the most powerful of modern planeswalkers, and certainly a supreme mind mage, Jace has faced many trials in his journey across the multiverse. His story begins in youth on his home plane of Rin, where a spark deep within incubated, awaiting its moment of ignition. Born as the son of Gav Bellerin, Jace spent his early life within Vryn's impressive mage ring network, surrounded by partisan conflict between two political factions, the Amperin League and the Trovian Separatists. His innate, budding telepathy fueled Bellerin's intellectual growth and his parents' consternation as he used his skill for all manner of pranks. The boy's ability soon attracted the attention of the great Sphinx, telepath and mind mage, Alhameret, who saw in Jace potential and agreed to mold him under tutelage. Alhamarit occupied position as High Arbiter, intermediary between the tenuous Amperins and Trovians. The Sphinx employed Bellerin as a courier which developed into espionage, 
charging the boy to enter camps in secret and use his telepathy to glean faction secrets. After years, Jace's confidence solidified and the mage attempted to penetrate his master's own mind. Touching all hammer at psyche unleashed a torrent of horrifying realizations. First, the Sphinx wasn't an arbiter for peace, but had instead orchestrated the factitious conflict for his own personal gain. More shocking to the boy, however, was the discovery that he was a planeswalker and had ignited his spark nearly a year prior in a journey through the blind eternities. Alhamrit had continuously wiped Jace's memory of these facts, barring him from information and destroying his agency. Feelings of betrayal, of resentment and revenge filled Jace. His life, his reality was a lie. Bellerin sought to repay his deceitful master and goaded Alhamrit to a battle of psychic wits. The two mages entered a dangerous duel of mystical cunning highlighted in the art of Clash of Wills, the text of which reads, Alhamaret rose to his feet, and the full force of his mind hit Jace like a storm front. But Alhamaret misjudged his pupil's strength, and although he was the greatest telepath on Vryn, Jace defeated the Sphinx. The outcome of battle left Alhamaret's mind destroyed and body lifeless, while Jace's own psyche shattered into a thousand fragments. The trauma launched Bellerin from Vryn on a blind planeswalk, he landed, without memory or purpose, on Ravnica's harrowing metropolitan streets as seen in Jace Telepath Unbound. With his past forgotten and present in disarray, Jace reconstructed his identity and built a new life on Ravnica, the only remnant of his past self, the Sphinx collar symbol on his cloak. Bellerin's telepathy earned him luxury through blackmail and piqued the interest of a secretive interplanar organization known as the Infinite Consortium. The consortium operated on many planes outside the law's purview, dealt in secrets, espionage, assassination, and smuggling of illicit materials for dubious gain. Jace accepted an invitation and audience with the merciless artificer planeswalker Tezzeret, master of the consortium, who extended to Bellerin mentorship and profound knowledge in exchange for service. The mind mage agreed and spent much time within the organization, gathering information, acquiring skills in illusion and psionic magic and growing more detached, colder, and sinister. One mission brought Jace into conflict with pyromancer and planeswalker Chandra Nalar, who had stolen an ancient mysterious artifact known as the Dragon Scroll. The consortium was hired to retrieve the scroll. Jace tracked Nalar, and after a brief but violently explosive confrontation, fulfilled his mission, wiped the pyromancer's memory, and returned the scroll. Its indecipherable runes sparked deep interest in Bellerin, who would return soon to uncover its mysteries. For years, Jace worked under Tezzeret, whose methods grew increasingly reprehensible. Bellerin committed atrocities in the consortium's name, any weakness or failure punished by cruel torture. Disabused of any notion of righteousness, Jace's morality reached a breaking point. He refused continued participation in evil, fell out of Tezzeret's favor, and fled to Ravnica's furthest reaches. He remained hidden in safety for some time and believed he'd escaped the Artificer's wrath. Here, he crossed paths with the cunning and beautiful necromancer Liliana Vess. Bewitched by her guile, Bellerin fell into a sensuous affair which pulled his heartstrings with such strength as he had never known. Their rivalry was short-lived. Tezzeret discovered his hideout and sent agents to capture the mage. At Vess's insistence, Bellerin attacked Tezzeret directly in his seat of power. But the assault was insufficient to break consortium defenses, and Jace was captured, tortured, and his mind prepared for control by Tezzeret's machines. Bellerin's anguish furthered with the realization that Vess had betrayed him by revealing his location to the consortium. Truly touched by his childlike naivety, Liliana freed Jace, who confronted Tezzeret one last time. Driven by anger, contempt, and revenge, Jace overpowers the artificer shatters Tezzeret's mind and leaves the consortium in crumbling ruin. With his days as evil's agent behind him, Jace returns to his own exploits. The mystery of the Dragon Scroll haunts his mind, begs to be revealed, which brings Bellerin to the verdant, mana-infused plane of Zendikar. Zendikar's enigmatic hedron fields and sunken ruins drive Jace's curiosity as the Mind Mage plums the plane's depths to exploit its secrets. The Hedron's curious engravings appear similar to the draconic runes found inscribed on the Dragon Scroll, and all Jace uncovers points him unerringly to the location known in Zendikari myth only as the Eye of Ugin. Jace ventures deep into an isolated mountain cavern in search of the Eye, and he reaches his destination only to find the wily pyromancer from his past 
Chandra Nalar, engaged in conflict with the draconic form of maddened planeswalker Sarkhan Vol. To repent for his past mistakes, Bellerin offers assistance to Chandra and urges her to use the magic contained within the Dragon Scroll, the invisible magic of Ghost Fire. The resultant blast incapacitates all three. When they come to, grave realization dawns. Outside forces conspire to bring the planeswalkers to the eye. Their presence and the use of ghost fire unlocks a millennia old binding and awakens the slumbering Eldrazi titans, beings from the blind eternities, insatiable and unstoppable. This we hear in the enigmatic flivver text of Eye of Ugin. An eye closes, a race awakens. Questions and mysteries assault Jace. Who orchestrated these events? What are the Eldrazi and how is the Dragon Scroll tied to their awakening? The answers lie beyond the confines of Zendikar. He plans walks away from the Eldrazi's building carnage in search of deeper understanding. Months of sojourning, of reliving in his mind past sins, of enduring psychic trauma crippled Jace with exhaustion. His thoughts require distraction, his body requires repose. The mage returns to Ravnica where he can disappear in the nameless crush of millions. Here, his thoughts are allowed to wander and loosen in Ravnica's cobbled streets. Jace is highly observant, with a mind trained to read deep inferences and puzzling connections. Two things grow increasingly apparent. First, the animosity between the city's guilds after the guild pact's dissolution is increasing. Hidden strings move them to ire. The second is the appearance of coincidental symbols dotting 10th District, inscrutable signs that capture Bellerin's attention and urge him to seek further, which we hear in a journal entry of his in the flavor text of Leyline Phantom. Is the maze itself a phantom? Or is one as real as the other? Perhaps I am as mad as the dragon. He discovers that these symbols are waypoints for the implicit maze, a trial left behind by guild pack drafter and mastermind Azor to determine whether a new document can reorganize the guilds or if they must face divine judgment by the mystical supreme verdict. The deeper Jace penetrates, the more he becomes entangled in the maze's mysteries. He isn't the only one seeking the implicit maze. Spies of House Demir and even the dragon parent of the Izzet League, Niv Mizzet himself, scours the city to discover hidden meaning. Jace is thrust into guild politics and subterfuge, which culminates in the maze running announced by Mizzet. Each guild volunteers an ambassador to run the dangerous gauntlet and seize power for their own. But as the runners scheme and thwart another, Bellerin realizes the maze is a test of cooperation, not competition. At the maze's climactic end, each runner is granted the ability to invoke the supreme verdict and obliterate the city. In a gambit, Jace uses his telepathy to link minds with all ten runners, each sharing another's emotions and motives. He controls all present to prevent the verdict, and in so doing, an act of deliberate cooperation is declared the new living guild pact, mediator of Ravnica, suffused with its powerful binding magic, illustrated in the art of the card bearing this name. Jace assumes his duty with trepidation. Yes, his actions saved millions, and he wishes Ravnica spared from desolation, a sentiment deeply struck in the flavor text of Seal of the Guild Pact. I'd rather see the guilds contend together with words in the halls of power than in the streets with swords. But he is a planeswalker. The living Guild Pact's function demand he remain on Ravnica, effectively tethering Bellerin to the plane. In the aftermath of the maze running, Gideon Jura, another planeswalker, petitions Jace for assistance and brings word from Zendikar. The Eldrazi Titans freed from slumber are devastating the plain, their broods slaughtering millions and eviscerating the landscape. Guilt weighs heavily on Jace, who agrees to return with Jura and fight the battle for Zendikar. Knowledge is the key to victory against an ancient, invulnerable threat. Bellerin plums ruins, hedron networks, mazes, and depths alongside Zendikari natives to understand the stone hedrons and unlock their hidden purpose, which we see in cards like Comparative Analysis and Unity of Purpose. This brings him into contact with Ugin the Spirit Dragon and one of the three planeswalkers that orchestrated the millennia-old binding of the titans. Ugin's intellect is unrestrained, his insight piercing even to a mind mage as skilled as Bellerin. The two discuss recourse for unfolding events. Ugin lectures Jace on the Eldrazi's significance, that they may fill a vital niche in the multiverse, and that to destroy them might unleash disastrous consequences. He insists on imprisonment, but naivety, arrogance, or a mixture of both spurs Jace to disregard Ugin's injunction. He leaves behind the spirit dragon's admonitions, and enlightened as to the Hedron Network's potential, develops a plan to destroy the Eldrazi titans Ulamog and Kozilek. He brings thoughts to an assembly of walkers that now include himself, Gideon Jura, Chandra Nalar, and Nissa Ravain. 
The group and Zendikari lure the Eldrazi Titans, align the Hedron network to bind their corporeal forms to the plane, then incinerate them with flame-wreathed mana ley lines. These events are conveyed in the Art of the Cards Bonds of Mortality and Fall of the Titans. In the battle's aftermath, Jay surveys the beauty that was saved and profound realization dawns. Rather than flee adversity, Planeswalkers have an obligation to stand and defend the meek, and united they can overcome any threat, a thought heard in the flavor text of Call the Gatewatch. I've heard it said that a Planeswalker is someone who can always run from danger, but Gideon's right, we're also the ones who can choose to stay. With this sentiment of solidarity and purpose, Jace founds the Gatewatch alongside the other walkers, each swearing an oath to keep watch. We see Bellerin's pledge and oath of Jace, and the walkers united in Zendikar Resurgent. The first order of business for the nascent Gatewatch is to hunt the third Eldrazi Titan, Emrakul, who escaped Zendikar and has not been seen since, and to recruit to the Gatewatch planeswalkers who had initially bound the Titans. Ugin refused, scolding them for the destruction of Ulamog and Kozilek. Jace seeks out another of the three, the vampire Soren Markov, on his home plane of Innistrad. Bellerin stumbles headfirst into a great and dangerous mystery that grips the entire plane. Innistrad is a grim, dark world filled with untold horror and barely grasping hope, but a terrible force seeps in. An insidious, malevolent aura permeates the air, twists minds to madness, and grotesquely alters physical appearance. Where once zombies shambled and vampires hunted, now the alien wails of eldritch horrors reign. This activity coincides with the appearance of strange cryptoliths dotting the landscape, whose purpose or creator remain unknown. We see them displayed in cards like Warped Landscape and Cryptolith Fragment. As Jace searches for Sorn, Innistrad's greater mystery snares him in a web of madness. He first seeks the guidance of an old flame in Liliana Vess and entreats her within her manor, but is met with stern refusal, their past feelings for another too complex to discern. Following the old roads, he arrives at Markov Manor, Sorn's ancestral home or at least what's left of it. It's been shattered into fragments. The stone edifice floats in eerie defiance of gravity. The inhabitants have themselves been encased in stone, which we see in cards like Declaration of Stone and Foreboding Ruins, the flavor text of which reads, Sent to find Soren, Jace ventured to the vampire's ancestral home, only to find evidence of a deeper mystery. Astonished, Jace ventures within, where he discovers a bound tome, a journal of research in astrology left by the moon sage planeswalker Tamio, who herself was studying the connections between the moon, Cryptolis, and Innistrad's growing madness. He analyzes the writings for any information useful to his search seen in Pour Over the Pages, the text of which states, I'm certain that the fate of Markov Manor is connected to these Cryptolis. This Tamio was on to something. Bellerin's curiosity and the journal lead him to the Drownyard Temple on Aphelia's coast, where a gathering of half-crazed cultists chant around cryptolith formations. So great is insanity's siren call that it has corrupted even Archangel Avacyn and her winged host, protectors of Innistrad. The Mind Mage too is cast under its thrall. Suspicions and paranoia seep into Jace's thoughts and convince him Liliana is responsible for the cryptolis. Under their influence, he confronts the necromancer, and in their brief fight, she rests Jace momentarily from madness. We see their meeting on display in the illustration of Liliana's indignation, the flavor text of which reads, Days ago you came to my door asking for help, Jace, yet now here you are with accusations? The shouts, the whispers of madness, continue to ring in his head. Bellerin then moves to Thraven's high city to confront Innistrad's twisted protector Avacyn and dispel the plane's mystery. Here, he's met by Tamio, who calms his mind and cures Jace of the madness. The two discuss their options. Tamio voices concern over destroying Avacyn, whose presence, though warped, safeguards the plane from unknown evils. They're given no choice, however, as the angel attacks them presently, and if not for Soren Markov's intervention, would have killed them. Soren battles and obliterates Avacyn, illustrated in anguished unmaking. The consequences of her death and the cryptolith mystery are horribly revealed. Nahiri, a core lithomancer and planeswalker from Zendikar, and third member of the Eldrazi Binders, has unleashed her vengeance upon Sorn and his home for what he did to hers. Nahiri constructed the Cryptolis along Innistrad's ley lines to fuel the Drownyard Temple and lure Emrakul from beyond the Blind Eternities to feast upon all of Innistrad. 
As the Titan emerges, Bellerin gathers the Gatewatch and returns in the plane's defense, which we see in Deploy the Gatewatch. The battle for Thraben engulfs all as Twisted Eldrazi lash out at stalwart defenders. As a telepath, Jace's role is to protect the Gatewatch from Emrakul's madness. Bellerin's vast but ultimately mortal and limited mind is brushed by infinite incomprehensibility as Emrakul enters his thoughts and delivers an enigmatic message stating that she offers a gift but see that the land is not yet ready to receive. The Titan mentally overtakes the Gatewatch and Tamiyo to purposely seal herself within Innistrad's moon. This event illustrated in the card Imprisoned in the Moon. Exhausted and shaken, Jace realizes the Gatewatch's importance in the multiverse. He invites them to establish their base within his apartments on Ravnica. The Living Guild Pact assesses what has transpired on Ravnica in his absence and is most displeased. The Azorius arrestor Lavinia, Jace's confidant, reports several Senate members petrified under mysterious circumstances by the Gorgon planeswalker Vraska. Jace also learns that Izzet Research continues to close in on the discovery of planeswalkers. Reports among other guilds show subtle signs of unrest and instability. An unsettled feeling grips Jace. His advisors urge him to remain on Ravnica, fulfill his duties as living guild pact. But deep enmity and powerful memories consume Bellerin when word reaches that his old master Tezzeret appears at the Inventor's Fair on the plain of Kaladesh. In a rare stroke of rashness, Jace and the Gatewatch planeswalk to the world of invention and find themselves thrust into civil war between the renegades and the oppressive consulate. Bellerin confronts Tezzeret and attacks with psychic strikes to find the Artificer's mind shielded from telepathy, suggesting prediction of their duel. Jace and his allies join the Renegade's cause and attempt to discern Tezzeret's purpose. Through a cruel show of tortuous power, Liliana Vest defeats the Artificer and learns he is working for a far more sinister foe, the ancient Elder Dragon and Planeswalker Nicol Bolas, whom Tezzeret reveals to be on the plane of Amonkhet. Jace had prior dealings with Bolas while working for the Infinite Consortium. He knows the Dragon's genius, his mental and mystical prowess, and his evil soul. Whatever Bolas's machinations, he poses a grim threat to the entire multiverse and must be stopped. Jace insists on an immediate strike on Amonkhet before the dragon's defenses and plans materialize. The Gatewatch agrees to confront Bolas. Upon alighting on Amonkhet's sun-baked dunes, Jace is awestruck by the Elder Dragon's manipulation of civilization into one that revolves completely around his religion. Everything is done in service to the benevolent and all-seeing god pharaoh. The lies strong enough even to twist the minds of the plane's native gods. The religion is centered on the recounting of hours that herald the god pharaoh's return and admission to paradise, which Jace and Liliana uncover while exploring Noctamun's tombs. Here, Jace also realizes Liliana came not to help the Gatewatch, but to slay a demon from her past, Razaketh, to whom she is bound through an infernal contract. Once more, Liliana has betrayed his trust for personal gain. Before the Gatewatch can conclude investigations, the recounting of hours begins. The lie of salvation crumbles, the protection around Noctamun wavers, and the city is overrun by hordes of undead zombie Eternals who slaughter thousands in the streets. In the encompassing Bedlam, Jace witnesses Liliana's confrontation with Razaketh. Even with her immense skill, Vess is overpowered by the demon's contract which takes control of her body. His sentiment and past feelings for Liliana spur Jace to action. He conjures illusions to distract Razaketh long enough for Vest to reassert control and cast a killing wave of death magic to destroy the demon, which we see illustrated in the card Imaginary Threats. The victory, however, is minor and short-lived. Further counting of hours is ended. The dreaded hour of devastation arrives, and with it, the supremely powerful Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh. Battle between the Gatewatch and Elder Dragon consumes debris-strewn streets, each member attacking from their unique position of strength. For Jace Bellerin, this involves mental assault on the dragon's psyche. He probes and prods at Bolas's mind, seeking avenues of entry into the labyrinth maze of thoughts. The dragon mocks Bellerin, derides his weak insight and mental cunning, and instigates Jace into entering his mind, from whence his trap is sprung, and in an instant crushes the telepath's own mind. This is illustrated in The Art of Jace's Defeat, the flavor text of which reads, I had hoped for more from you, Jace, but I expected as much. Anguish, fear, torment grip Jace as his sanity frays. 
To escape utter brain death, Bellerin instinctively planeswalks to a location unknown to him, but buried deep within his subconscious by the spirit dragon Ugin. With the other Gatewatch members enduring similar defeats, Jace tumbles through the blind eternities without memory, without history, without self. He awakens, confused and dazed, on the lapping shores of far-flung Ixalan. For the second time in his life, Bellerin finds himself in a strange land with no recollection of his past. The Mind Mage teeters on insanity's edge as he looks to gather his fractured pieces. Jace's first instinct is to planeswalk away, but presence of an artifact on Ixalan, known to legend as the Immortal Sun, prevents all from leaving, as illustrated in the card Ixalan's binding, showing Jace's futile attempt to escape. Through great willpower, the mage survives in isolation. Surface memories return to him with a coastal breeze, presented as bizarre, confusing illusions. Slowly, he rediscovers his mental and mystical talent, but still without memory of his past self. While attempting to flee isolation, Jace, adrift on Ixalan's waters, is rescued by the crew of a pirate vessel, captained by the Gorgon planeswalker Vraska. She intends to kill him for their past conflicts on Ravnica, but stays her gaze after realizing he has no recollection of her or himself. Vraska takes Bellerin on and exploits his talents in pursuit of the lost city of Araska, famed location of the Immortal Sun. On their journey, the two develop a close bond of mutual respect that transitions into amorous affection. Deep in Ixalan's interior jungles, the Golden City presents itself, and the pair are swept into the surrounding river's tumultuous current, seen in the illustration of Perilous Voyage, whose flavor text reveals their shared intimacy. For the first time in her life, Vraska tried to prevent death. As he plummets along waterfalls, Jace descends deep into his past. The mage's fractured memories all surge back in a painful and overwhelming inundation of information. He remembers Vryn, his telepathic skills, his planeswalking journeys, the Eldrazi and formation of the Gatewatch, even Vraska and her past grievances, all on display in the card flood of recollection. Torn between old resentment and newfound love, he forgives the Gorgon of her crimes. As the pair venture further into Raska, they come to the chamber of the Immortal Sun, where sits the Sphinx Planeswalker, drafter of Ravnica's Guild Pact, and Azorius parent, Azor. The Sphinx reveals the Immortal Sun's purpose and a plan hatched centuries prior. Azor and the spirit dragon Ugin intended to lure Nicol Bolas to Ixalan and bind him with the artifact, forever sparing the multiverse from his designs. Though they failed, Azor's tale fully restores Bellerin's memories. The struggle on Amonkhet, the Gatewatch's failure, and the dire consequences of plans still in motion. Following this realization, Vraska reveals she was contracted by Bolas to locate the Immortal Sun for his own hidden agenda. The two agree the Elder Dragon must be thwarted, but Vraska insists she retain his trust. To do so, Jace wipes from her memories all recent events, their knowledge and their passion for another, which we see acted out in the card in Deuce Amnesia. With a stroke, Bellerin's love interest is made to forget at his own hand. Distraught by this loss but intent on facing Nicol Bolas, Jay surprises the scattered Gatewatch of the portentous circumstances looming on the horizon before returning to Ravnica. As founding member of the Gatewatch and the Living Guild Pact, Jace is keystone to Ravnica's defense against the Elder Dragon in the upcoming War of the Spark. He coordinates with others, orchestrates battle lines, and discusses grand strategy ahead of interplanar invasion by Bolas's dread horde army of Eternals. When the planar portal crackles into existence, it manifests on top of the guild pack chamber, shattering the building and disrupting mana ley lines, which instantly strips Bellerin of his guild pack powers. We see this desolation in cards like Gravnica at War and Emergence Zone, the flavor text of which reads, The planar bridge opened over the chamber of the guild pact, reducing the symbol of Ravnica's endurance to rubble. Shortly, the entire city is engulfed in war and carnage. During the war, Jace confronts his past affair in Liliana and his current interest, Vraska, both of whom have been pressed into Bolas' service. He forgives Vraska her past actions, and though tasked with assassinating Vess, cannot follow through, still possessed of strong feelings. At the war's climax, with Bolas defeated, Bellerin coordinates with Ugin to cast a massive illusion that obscures from all the Elder Dragon's true fate, imprisoned in the spirit realm. In the aftermath, Jace loses his status as Living Guild Pact to the dragon Niv-Mizzet, but it comes as relief. 
Bellerin struggled to maintain duties on Ravnica while Gatewatch Imperative sent him to many other planes, and relishes his newfound freedom. Months following the War of the Spark, Jace finds himself once more on the vibrant plane of Zendikar at Nyssa Ravain's request. Nyssa wishes to heal the plane's verger after Eldrazi desolation, while the core planeswalker Nahiri seeks to quiet the royal, subjugate nature, and restore Zendikar's ancient cities. Bellerin appeals to both parties, attempts to understand each side, but is ultimately unable to prevent battle between the two planeswalkers. His illusions, mind magic, and deceit do little but stir Nahiri's ire and betray Nissa's trust. Ravain triumphs in her mission to keep Zendikar's nature intact and ends further isolated from Jace, once her friend and ally. For some time, Bellerin loses himself in sojourns, research, and acquisition of knowledge. But soon, another threat as vile and reprehensible as Nicol Bolas surfaces on the plane of Mirrodin. Phyrexia, an ancient evil in the multiverse, has survived and spread glistening, corrupting oil across untold planes. They twist Mirrodin into a new Phyrexia teeming with metallic abominations and led by Elish Norn, mother of machines who wishes to extend Phyrexian influence to the very edges of the blind eternities. Jace, the Gatewatch, and other planeswalkers gather on Dominaria, listen to the accounts of Elspeth Tyrrell and others that Phyrexia is dangerous and on the brink of interplanar travel. They agree they must attack the menace directly to prevent wide-scale invasion and spare the multiverse. Armed with a filigree replica of the famous Golgothian Silex, a weapon of untold destruction, and led by intrepid Elspeth Tyrrell, Jace joins a strike team to infiltrate Phyrexia and detonate the device within the plane's core. As the team venture further into the nested hellscape of new Phyrexia spheres, they are harried and attacked, slowly succumb to corruption by the pernicious glistening oil, and completion into Phyrexianized monsters. In the dross pits, Jace receives a mental distress signal from Vraska, who had been separated from the strike team upon entry to Phyrexia. He rushes to her, only to find the Gorgon grievously wounded, infected by the glistening oil. Jace's sorrow immobilizes him. His love for Vraska prevents him from leaving her. The two embrace, and he conjures a mental image of their shared idol on Ravnica. Vraska, corrupted beyond redemption, strikes Jace with an oil-tipped stinger, infecting him with the virus. We see this tragedy unfold in the card Phyrexian Arena, which reads, For a bittersweet moment, Jace believed he could still save his love. A moment was all Vraska needed. For the glory of Phyrexia, she whispered. Bellerin and the team flee, rush against time to reach the seed core and detonate the Silex. Each passing minute transforms Jace as the corruption spreads, but he uses all of his mental cunning to shield his mind from its influence. The strike team's worst nightmare is realized at the seed core. The invasion tree, Roundbreaker, has already connected to myriad realms, Detonating the Silex will consign countless planes to oblivion. Jace argues it's a necessary sacrifice to save many others, and, with the Silex in hand, pours all of his fear, his hatred and anguish, his love for Vraska and loss into the bowl, igniting its destructive magic. This unfolds in the illustration of Bring the Ending. Kaya watched in horror as the illusion vanished from her hands. Jace held the real Silex and had activated it before Phyresis claimed his mind. But before the blast erupts, Elspeth intervenes, plunges her sword into Jace's corrupted heart, and vanishes with the Silex. Bellerin's lifeless body lies limp on the floor, until Elish Norn arrives and activates Realmbreaker's multiversal invasion. His corpse is reanimated, given new life as a completed planeswalker, and utterly devoted to new Phyrexia. Jace is unique among completed walkers during the March of the Machine in that he's given great autonomy, perhaps because of his own genius and ability to read minds. Or perhaps he's retained an independent and uncorrupted portion of his psyche, immune to Norn's command. Regardless, he makes no appearance and his whereabouts are unknown. In the aftermath of Norn's invasion, and with Phyrexia defeated, no news of Jace is heard by another walker. To compound, Realmbreaker's tampering with the Blind Eternities led to a great spark rupture, with many Planeswalkers losing the ability to travel in the multiverse. Jace Bellerin's fate is left unknown, his future undetermined. Will the Telepath, Illusionist, and Once Living Guild Pact prove strong and lucky enough to emerge purified of oil with his spark intact? Or is he already dead, living only in memory?
or else trapped on a distant plane, unable to escape its confines. Only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching and listening to this video on Jace Bellerin. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on Jace, his story, his mistakes, and his skills, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the podcast or the blog, where content is uploaded frequently. I want to thank my amazing supporters over on Patreon, who make all of this possible, and I couldn't do it without their fantastic support. If you'd like to become a lore luminary for access to me, a great community, written scripts, and early video drops, head to patreon.com slash thelorebarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore. Thank you.